Yeah, so I like was in the lead and right at about halfway and then you turn around and you run against the whole field. <laughs> and that's when I saw Anton and Ian for the first time and they both looked like really fresh. And I think Ian said to me, hey, see you later. <laughs> Hey, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Gotta Run Racing episode! Hi! <laughs> what is going on in the world of Gotta Run Racing? Well, it's crunch time, folks. We've got our last two races of the season fast approaching. This weekend is Island Lake Classic. Mm. And what I was just remembering today is the fact that we've been dealing with ultras all year. And now we're heading back into a 5 and a 10K. Hmm. And every time we do this race, we can't believe how fast it goes by. Yeah, we're done by noon. <laughs> we're done by <laughs> noon. And we're like, okay, well, now what? What do you mean there's nobody still out there running? So Yeah, and it's our 10th year. Yes, So this is, is cool. And it's a nice course. It's around the lake. And uh, the fall colors hopefully start moving and shaking. But yeah. yeah. No, it's exciting. So it's crunch time. That's what's up. That's what is up. And who is on the podcast today? We got a good one today, folks. It's Adrian McDonald from Fort Collins, Colorado. Adrian recently won for the second time Leadville 100. Second time in a row. Second not, time in a row. And not too many people have done it back to back. So I no, think there's only haven't. maybe a handful. And he comes from the road world. Yeah, fast marathoner for sure. 226 was his fastest marathon time. I think at Boston, I'm not too sure, but definitely uh, a fast runner and new to the scene. He just kind of broke out or started doing ultras four years ago, five years ago. Yeah, yeah. not even, I don't think. So yeah, there's lots to talk about, let's, lots to know about this kid. Yeah, let's uh, see what he's got to say. Let's dive in. Here is Adrian McDonald coming up. Welcome, Adrian, to the podcast, and a big congrats to you on your repeat at Leadville. <laughs> Thank you, and thanks for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to chat about both Leadvilles in a minute, but first, you're relatively relatively new to the ultra scene. I was just and wondering what made you switch from marathons to ultras. So in the spring of 2020, I was training for the Boston Marathon um, and obviously that got canceled and so there's this here in Fort Collins Colorado there's um, sort of like a dirt service road that runs up a mountain just outside of town and since I was pretty fit I decided to go after the fastest known time on that and in doing that I did a lot of trail running um, sort of fell in love with it. And I had always had this idea of doing ultras and sort of having all the road marathons canceled was mm -hmm. sort of a, just sort of felt like it was the time to do it. Did you read Born to Run before you signed up for Leadville? No, I actually didn't read Born to Run until this summer. Oh, wow. <laughs> what did you think? Um, I like enjoyed it. So I had always thought that uh, it was actually gifted to me when I graduated from college um, back in 2010 by my grandmother. And I always, like I had obviously heard about the book and I thought if I read it, it was just sort of like a book about running barefoot. Um, mm. But now that I've actually read it, I know that there's a lot more to it. And um, <laughs> yeah, all the Leadville history is cool. And um, yeah, it's a great story. It sure is. You should listen to the audio version because the guy who does the audio version of the book, it's more impact and he puts a lot of uh, emotion into it. So, yeah, it's a, it's a big tw bit of twist on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing the movie. Oh, yeah. There's supposed to be a movie with uh, Cabala Blanco coming out. Really? Yeah. And I actually think it's Matthew McConaughey that plays him. Wow. Yeah. So that'll yeah. be that'll be good for all the ultra runners out there. So what made you choose Leadville as your first hundred miler? Um, well, one, 
it's sort of close to Colorado. I mean, I hadn't really, I wasn't, I'm a pretty big like student of the sport when I was like into marathons and track, um, but I didn't really know much about ultra marathoning. So Leadville was just sort of the one in Colorado that I knew about. Um, and then I had done, there's this race, it's a road race up a 14er here in Colorado, uh, Mount Evans Ascent. And I had done that while training for a marathon um, and did pretty well. And so I thought that maybe I, I could do well in a really high altitude race like Leadville. Did you feel any pressure going into Leadville your first time around being at your first hundred miler and nobody really knew who you were? Right. Um, I mean, all the pressure last year was just sort of pressure that I put on myself, um, that I just wanted to do really well. Um, so I don't know if there was any more pressure that I, for running a hundred miles than there was for like a road marathon, like I was doing before, I guess there's a little bit cause you have like your pacers waiting in the wings and you don't want to have them like miss out on their run for the day or. <laughs> um, yep. <laughs> so yeah, there, I guess there's like a little bit of like added pressure cause you have all these other people involved, but um, that was really it. And what about you towing the line and you see Anton and legends of Leadville, Anton and <laughs> Ian Sherman, what was going through your mind knowing that you're going to be racing against these guys? So Anton, I'd obviously known about Anton and seen Unbreakable and other things about him. And um, since he had been off for so long, it had been like five or seven years since he had finished an ultra. I didn't really think he would be like that competitive. Um, so it was actually like really impressive that he ended up finishing third that year. Um, but yeah, after the, I hadn't seen him in the race. I had maybe seen Ian like take off right at the start and I don't remember passing him. must have been in the dark or at the first aid station, but, um, yeah, so I like was in the lead right at about halfway and then you turn around and you run against the whole field <laughs> and that's when I saw Anton and Ian for the first time and they both looked like really fresh. And I think Ian said to me, Hey, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, that's when I sort of got sort of starstruck and intimidated by them. <laughs> it's my story. Of, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. And I started of like, I don't know if I was like doubting myself, but it was, there was like a little bit of a, thoughts like oh no these guys are like so experienced what am I doing way out in front of them and they look so fresh um, but I didn't think about it too much <laughs> <laughs> my story with Anton is that in 2014 when I did Leadville he was coming down hope and I was going up hope and he almost pushed me off the mountain <laughs> really <laughs> got the elbows out there yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he, he went on the inside and I went on the outside. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's tough because it's like a single track and you're past every single person in the race. Uh, yeah. Which gives you an advantage when you're in, when you're up front because then you can safely say where, where you're at compared to everyone else, right? Yeah, but the um, one issue I ran into that I noticed this year is like a lot of people they're like hiking up with their head down. Um, oh. <laughs> some of them have like headphones in. And so I guess in the past when you could have pacers over that section, it was good to have a pacer to sort of like be your, your plow to get everyone out of the way. And um, it's sort of hard to do that when you're 56 miles in or whatever. Are you saying you're not allowed to have a pacer starting Winfield anymore? No. Oh. Yeah, not till you got back to Twin Lakes. Oh wow. wow. That yeah. that's a big change. I didn't know no I did not know that. No. Yeah, they put that in last year. What was the reason behind that? Do you know? 
I think it was um, just traffic related with the traffic hmm. at Winfield. They don't allow crew there either. Right. I would hate to go back over Hope without a pacer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what people say, but it, it's all I know, so. <laughs> True enough. <laughs> nice. Did you run into any surprises in your first 100 miler? Obviously, you did extremely well, but was there anything that you came across that you weren't expecting or? Um, so I, I guess last year I was sort of surprised at how easy it was. <laughs> And then this year, and it like wasn't easy, but maybe it was just, I don't know. But then this year I like went into it thinking like, oh, this is going to be, I'm going to feel like really good all day. Like I did last year. Um, and it was like harder this year. And I don't know if like last year I had like all this like extra adrenaline because I was sort of surprising myself by running so well. Um, like I had forgotten how much it hurt to <laughs> go back up Pope Pass the second time. And, um, I think I think that you said the act, the key to ultra running. You forget about the pain until you're back in it again, and that's why yeah, you keep signing up for these things. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and maybe you had a little bit of beginner's luck on your side too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that was some of it. After your win at Leadville in 21, did you feel a little bit of pressure at Black Canyons this year? Because everybody now knows who you are. Right. Um, yeah, Black Canyon, I think I sort of let... Uh, so when I ran Leadville last summer, like I didn't really care about anyone else in the race. Like I went into it, like I'm just going to go run, run this race and like do as best as I can and it ended up winning. And then for Black Canyon, I was like looking at all the other people in the race and they all had these like really fast, I was like obsessing over their like road marathon and half marathon. Yeah. Um, and I was like convincing myself that the race was gonna be really fast. Um, because of that, even though like 100K races are never that fast. Um, and so I, I don't know if it was like pressure, but just sort of like a lack of confidence. Like I knew I could run 100 miles really well, but I wasn't sure about 100K. And so I like, because I thought the race was gonna be so fast, I like didn't wanna drink too much water and have to like stop and pee. And <laughs> there's like all these sort of silly things that I let happen to myself just because I was like intimidating myself about the, the other runners. Yeah. So what happened uh, at Black Canyon? Yeah, I just sort of, um, I was like, especially coming from Colorado to Arizona in the middle of winter, it was, wasn't like that hot. But for like winter, it was hot, like 75, 85 degrees. Mm. Um, and I like got dehydrated before it even got hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I never like the plan there was to like, which is like everyone's plan and a lot of people screw it up, but is to really start racing when you get to Black Canyon City, which is like 40 miles or something. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was toast by 50K. Oh. Is, yeah. is the second half harder than the first? I heard that. Um, it is when you bonk like I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it is. There's, I mean, it's mostly a downhill course, but at mile, right after that Black Canyon City aid station, there's a pretty big climb coming out of it. Um, which like that alone would make the second half harder and mm -hmm. like it's heated up in the day. And um, Most people are there to try to get a ticket to Western. Was that your objective? Yeah. Got it. It's a pretty competitive field to do that. Oh my gosh. I can imagine. Would you try to get to Western 
this year or with a ticket or sorry next year with a golden ticket um, so i'm sort of deciding between like the western states route or the utmb route for next summer nice um, i this think we're leaning towards the utmb route well it doesn't hurt that it was just on this weekend i'm sure you were glued yeah. to your <laughs> computer like we were <laughs> yep <laughs> What did you think of Killian's performance? Um, yeah, that's like amazing how how he's able to do that. And he was like down by 20 minutes and then just took off and crushed the course record. And also that he just that he's been doing it for so long. Um, he's like, did he first win that when he was like 18 or 19 or something? Something like that. Yeah, he was pretty young. He was pretty young for sure. Yeah. And and second place came under 20 hours too, which is still yeah. pretty impressive. And the women, of course, we were cheering for our Canadian who came second. Yeah. Marianne Hogan, but it was such an inspiring race to watch. It's hard not to get caught up in the well, as soon as you hear that music, they <laughs> have me. I was just like, okay, I got to plan my weekend around how I'm going to watch this. <laughs> so let's move on to this year's Leadville. What was right. the game plan to repeat or PR it like you did? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, my plan going in was to run the first half in seven hours, 40 minutes, which was 10 minutes faster than last year. And then once I'd done that, I was going to decide if I wanted to go after the course record or um, like try and run under 16 um so that was sort of like my my race plan for this year um and i did it's kind of funny like that i ran exactly 740 <laughs> and then i got there and i wasn't really feeling that great mm. um, and some of it was that i hadn't i took off into the lead at about a mile 11 and no one no one went with me and so like i didn't see any other people from the race for like 40 miles and i i think it sort of got me out of that racing mindset oh wow yeah they're just like i'm on this just big long run by myself <laughs> um do you like that adrian do you like being out front and being chased or would you prefer to do the chasing um i just like like competing so like when i got that like i sort of had this feeling like oh i'm not like competing against anyone i think that i sort of lost like that extra adrenaline you get um when you're in a race that makes things a little bit easier to um to handle so yeah once i like turned around and i saw tyler who was in second at the time um that sort of like got me going again. Like, oh, he looks good and he's chasing me down. He wants to win this. Um, so I need to get moving again. <laughs> wow. And that was around mile what? So I saw him, um, it was like a mile out of Winfield when you turn back onto the trail. So I was like running, just about to get on the trail and he came like shooting off. I said, hi, Tyler. He looked at his watch and said, all right, and took off. <laughs> That, that's actually pretty close yeah still, was, like he he could catch you still hmm. yeah it was like 15 minutes yeah behind um and he cut it down a little bit more by twin lakes i think to 12 minutes that's pretty incredible what would you say is the hardest section of leadville or the one that you like the best um See, the hardest is, um, it would be easy to say like, so what got me this year was that section on the way out, you run down Hope Pass and you turn right on this trail, I forget what it's called. Um, and in my head, I thought of it as sort of a rolling, like easy trail, but it's actually like a pretty decent climb. <laughs> and that's when I was having all these like negative thoughts about 
sort of that I wasn't feeling good and it was kind of boring. Um, and then I like found myself hiking and I probably did hike there last year too, but I didn't remember it. I'm like, why am I hiking so much? Um, I still got a long way to go. Um, so that was the section that was like hardest. Sorry. That was a section that was the hardest for me this year. Um, and then obviously the second time up Hope is really hard and power line <laughs> on the way in is really hard. I think that's what he was waiting for, power line. <laughs> that, that was that was my nightmare, power line. Because that's when you're really tired and you have to climb yeah. again, which is ridiculous. <laughs> but the good thing about it is like I'm like, all right, if I can just get up power line, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna win the race again. Yeah. I just have to do it. It's not gonna be fun, but just got to get to the top and then it's you're sort of home free and what was your favorite section the one the section that you do like the best um so i i love going up hope past the first time uh, <laughs> before you're too tired it's just <laughs> so pretty up there um and then there's the section so you climb out of Twin Lakes, which is, that's like a pretty tough climb. Uh, but then it's sort of this nice, like gradual downhill uh, all the way into half pipe. And it's, you can start sort of run pretty fast there. And, mm. um, you're not feeling, or I'm not feeling too bad yet. So I, um, yeah, I enjoy that. There's lots of like Aspens and mm. it's, like a, it's a really pretty area. Even along the river, coming out back in May Queen, that's pretty good. That section. River there. or lake? Oh, sorry, the lake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that lake is just so long. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is pretty. But you can like sort of see like I have to run all the way to that dam. <laughs> so far away. <laughs> um, and then I always like the finish. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Who but, doesn't? <laughs> but of course, it has to be an uphill finish, of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we looked at the results before we um, came on to chat with you today. Do you know how many people have won back to back or back to back to back before you? Had you looked? Um, I don't, I could like guess. Uh, I know like Anton did it, Ian Sharman is one three in a row, I think. Uh, the first guy who won, is it? Skip. Skip. Um, I don't remember his last name. Um, but Steve Peterson did it four times. Yeah. So I think you're number six that okay. has, has won it at least back to back. And I was going to ask you about three-peating, but then you mentioned UTMB. So obviously that may not be scenario <laughs> yeah yeah we'll see <laughs> well a big congrats on you repeating your win at leadville i'm just curious would you ever come to canada or have you ever raced in canada uh i have not wow. i've been to montreal <laughs> um for i went to a montreal impact game when they were called that i guess they've changed their names. what sport is that uh, soccer. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you know of any of our hundred milers that we have up here? The names of them? <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> Putting you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have some pretty epic races too. So, <laughs> actually, you should look at the death race. That one's in Alberta, so it's not as big of a hike for you. But, but <laughs> Fat Dog would be comparable to UTMB. Okay. And Twenty miles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then Quebec also has some amazing 100 Ks, 100 miles. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you guys? We're what? in Ontario, which is pretty flat. We're just outside of Toronto. Okay. So we don't have any vert. <laughs> uh -huh. But we're working on our retirement plan to live in some altitude. Yeah, we need some altitude <laughs> in our lives. <laughs> yeah. Um... I mean, there are so many like cool races 
and like I've only done one hundred miler <laughs> twice, but um, yeah, there are so many cool ones out there. You must have a long list. Yeah, um, and like I'm trying to like take advantage of like this opportunity and use it to travel. Like one of those Cirque Series races when I was was in Alaska. Um, oh, cool! So nice. I went up there for a week. And I felt like I needed like two months to really see a, see that part of the world at least. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. This has been a pleasure. We really appreciate yeah. you taking the time out of your work day and congratulations again. We're really thank looking you. forward to seeing what you accomplish in this ultra running yeah. sport because you're new on the scene and we love following <laughs> newbies. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. And you have a lot of fans in Canada, so come on up. Come on up. Yeah. I'll have to look at, uh, are there any good fall races? Oh, there are lots of good fall races. In, in Quebec. Yeah. Yes, Quebec. Definitely in Quebec. Learn your French. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Adrian. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, have a good day. Yeah. Cheers. Bye. Right. There you have it. That is Adrian McDonald. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's all you can say. It is incredible the fact that you know Leadville is not uh, an easy course. You're starting at close to ten thousand feet and uh, and climbing. But you know what? He really uh, he got it done. He broke his record from last year. <laughs> last year, mm -hmm. he's became the third fastest of all time to do this course, and he beat second place by over two hours. So come on. That's a, that is a fact. That is, that's impressive. <laughs> it is impressive. So <laughs> your eyes were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he basically said he was alone for a, 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 lot, a lot of the race there. Mm -hmm. About 40 miles, yeah. But I like his strategy. The fact that he lives at 5,000 feet. He still does his, his hard speed training. Yep. But he goes to altitude on the weekends to run slower and higher and longer. That, that's a good formula. Hey, hey, if we had mountains around us, obviously yeah. that is the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we can't wait to see what he does next. And I don't know if he's going to three-peat because he has his sights on Western States and UTMB. Or UTMB, yeah. Because he was watching it like we all were and we had the hook. So... <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, that'd be incredible that but if he is at UTMB next year, hey, maybe we'll bump into him. But we won't buy him a beer. No, no beers. <laughs> Pizza. Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. Okay. Till next time. Cheers. Bye.